What is up, Pitt fans? Thank you so much for tuning in to Inside the Panthers on YouTube. My name is Stephen Thompson. Here with my partner, Dominic Campbell. We're here. The Panthers have just completed their 2024 spring game. The gold team came away winners, 17-10. to 10. The late offensive push led by Nate Yarnell by the blue team was not good enough. They're eating tofu hot dogs tonight while the gold team is eating steak. Uh, a, 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 an interesting game. Uh, I feel like it started somewhat fast but got a little bit slow uh, in the middle, and then you got a pretty – Pretty big burst of offense uh, in the in the middle of that uh, towards the end of that game. Excuse me, uh, Dom. What what were your kind of big takeaways? What did you see from the Panthers uh, that was encouraging and and maybe even uh, disconcerting? What did you see from them this, uh, today? Well, I suppose the amount of punts is not always good to see in a spring game, but I would say that the offense that we saw the bare bones of it. Obviously, it's a spring game, and we aren't going to see the full offense as we will this fall. But I did enjoy seeing the ball being thrown to different receivers and not having to ask questions after a press conference about why your tight end isn't getting targets all game. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was one of my biggest takeaways was that playmakers got the ball, you know, like it was, it wasn't just Gavin. It was Kenny Barth. It was uh, Kenny Johnson. Excuse me. They found some of these freshman wide receivers. Um, they found ways to get the running backs involved in the screen game as well. Um, you know, it, it was, it was interesting and I think encouraging. And I think, you know, a lot of this stuff that we saw from the offense that we had heard about the offense, that we heard about the offense making some progress and, uh, you know, they had taken some strides and that they were cutting down on, on the mental errors. I think, you know, you, you hear that when someone's selling it to you after a practice and you think that they're just trying to be positive. Uh, I think today you actually saw that in action on the field and the Panthers did look better in that area as well. I mean, the defense is kind of always going to be the star of a game like this where you split up the rosters and you've got different units in there, different, you know, ones and twos and threes all playing with each other. Uh, the defense kind of has an advantage in that, in that sense, especially the way Pitt plays, you know, it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups and the defense won a lot of those today, but I think the offense did show some good things as well. Who was kind of your biggest standout of the game? Who's kind of the MVP uh, of either team uh, as you watched today? I guess Rasheem Biles, I mean, obviously last year, fresh, two, true freshman linebacker. He exploded in terms of special teams. I think he had at least three block punts. Um, and today he's just flying all around the field, made a lot of tackles, and one, one big one as well that I really liked. But I think he's just a guy that really has a chance to push for some starting time come this fall. And I think, you know, a lot of the defensive coaches and Pat's talked about him as well. We've asked the players. They, they really like this guy, and he's no joke. It's not just going to be on special teams, but he'll be an excellent player on the defensive side of the ball this fall. Yeah, Jake Bernowski, tight ends coach, special teams coordinator, was really excited about getting Rasheem Biles on special teams. But like you said, he is definitely going to be an impact player on defense as well, even in a really deep linebacker's room. Led the led the team, led the game with seven total tackles, had a couple for a loss, and a pass defended, and a sack as well. Um, it, he played a really good game. I think that's a great choice. But to me, it was, it was really Gavin Bartholomew, a guy that you talked about a little bit earlier. I mean, only three targets, only two catches, but you look at Gavin's uh, game logs from last year, and that would have been a really excellent game for him by those standards. I mean, uh, I believe it would have – uh, he, he had two catches, but they were for, uh, you know, huge chunks of yards. I think they were both 20 plus yard plays, um, which you love to see. He was involved. He was running open. Uh, he was dragging defenders, you know, inside the 10, uh, for a big play to, to set up a touchdown pass. So, um, I, I think it was Bartholomew, um, if for nothing else, then like he could have caught zero balls today. And I still would have been encouraged by the fact that they targeted him three times that they were looking for him. And that was only in one half. He only played. Uh, 20 total minutes of football. Um, so in really limited action, he was a huge part of the gold team's offense. And you can tell that uh, this pit offense is not just kind of talking the talk about getting Gavin Bartholomew involved. They are really walking the walk as well. So I thought that was really encouraging. And, and he was kind of my, my big star of the game. We talked about it a little bit, but, you know, talking about the offense, I mean, what were kind of your impressions of this thing? I mean, first time seeing it live, first time seeing it, you know, in a stadium, in an environment like this, a live action game. Uh, what did you make of Cade Bell's system, and do you feel like the Panthers are on the right track? Yeah, I hope you would hope so. I mean, just watching the game today, I liked what I saw. Again, spreading the ball out a lot, lots of different players getting targets, not just the stars, but those freshman wide receivers. We talked, I mean, Lamar Seymour had a really nice catch over the middle for that touchdown from Nate Yarnell. That's really encouraging. Um, he was a mid year enrollee last year. So to see him get some get some production today was really nice to see. Zion Fowler L as well was another player that got some production retro freshman. Um, but yeah, I just think the offense did pretty well. I think, again, there were times when it was a bit slow and things didn't work as well. They did talk about that a lot in press conferences, just, you know, trying to limit mistakes and trying to make sure things go better. But obviously if you're trying to go really fast, learn the offense and moving through. You're going to have some growing pains there. And we saw a little bit of that today, but 
Um, I don't think it was, it was as bad as they have been discussing. So I think that we saw some strides this spring, and that's a very encouraging sign if you're a Pitt fan. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I mean, I walked in today thinking this offense was really behind the curve. Um, I, you know, you see four or five different takeaway stickers pop up, you know, each time that you go back to practice and you start to think, okay, maybe this thing has a long way to go. Is it ready for, for this level of football as a scheme, you know, ready for this level of football? And I think you saw today that uh, it is something that can be successful at this level of football. I think the most encouraging sign, um, because, you know, K Bell is not just the offensive coordinator. He is also the quarterback's coach. So seeing clean play uh, from Nate Yarnell and to a certain extent, Eli Holstein, even though he did uh, throw an interception today, I, I thought, especially Yarnell, him playing a clean game, he's 12 of 16 uh, for 128 yards, I want to say. Uh, let me double check that real quick. Uh, 108 yards, excuse me, uh, a touchdown and no interceptions. I mean, that was, that's brilliant. Um, you know, for him to only have played, I believe four or five series and to come out with those numbers, I thought was really encouraging. I thought his play was kind of indicative of how the rest of the team went. I mean, the issues that you saw in the spring game were not tied to the scheme. Uh, I think they were more, you know, execution or they were, you know, penalties, um, things like that, drop passes. Uh, it fell more on the players to execute what the scheme was calling for uh, than the scheme to get guys open. Like we said, I mean, it really accomplished that all all spring and and even in the lead up uh, after we had hired uh, after Pitt had hired Cade Bell. Uh, we had heard all about how it's going to get guys open. It's going to get playmakers in space. Uh, and that was exactly what we saw today. So I think a pretty encouraging first showing. Uh, from Cade Bell and this offense. And I think the Panthers are absolutely headed in the right direction and with only room to grow. I mean, that's the thing about it. We're only two months or three months into Cade Bell's tenure as offensive coordinator. He's only gotten to practice with these guys for about 15 individual practices. That's a, a little bit over, you know, four or five weeks. So these guys haven't been super involved in it for a long time and still were able to show some good things this afternoon at Axter Stadium. Let's take it over to the other side of the ball. I mean, I know you shouted out Rasheem Biles, but did anyone else on the defensive side of the ball really impress you and, and show you some good things today? Safeties overall did pretty well, but Javon McIntyre again, very well. I think he led the, uh, um, goal team in a uh, tackle. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's, he's been a really good player. I, I liked him last year. I think he established himself as a starter and he's gonna do that again this year he's he's a really solid player and just you know he's able to make a tackle when needed donovan donovan mcmillan as well as a great tackler we've seen that last year and saw it again today i just think the safeties look really good i think and obviously the linebackers too but i, I really like the safeties overall yeah and i think the big thing for mcintyre was getting his hands on the football um you know a pass defended i believe he had a i believe he had a pick yeah he had the lone pick right thrown in the game um that was something that he's talked about a lot is he had balls come his way last year that could have been interceptions that could have been big plays and he did just didn't come up with the ball he just didn't have the hands didn't make the catch didn't you know make that one you know final finishing move and today he was able to do that i think that's a big step not just for him but for the the defense as a whole that relies so much on kind of creating chaos and creating turnovers and and making some making some hay uh, for offenses, you got to get your hands on the football to do that. And he was able to do that today. I, I think another guy who really stood out to me was actually another young guy, but a linebacker, Braylon Lovelace, I thought was excellent today. Figures to be kind of a backup linebacker, a, a Mike linebacker at this point, but I think he can rotate in uh, as maybe a money uh, or a star. I think more of a money as he kind of sits behind Brandon George. Uh, but I think all these guys are going to play a lot. Lovelace only had four tackles today, but he had one and a half tackles for loss. Um, he had a quarterback hurry as well. Um, he had a big fourth down stop uh, to cause a turnover on downs and set up uh, his offense with a chance to score a really short touchdown on a short field. I believe it was only a 36 yard drive after Lovelace made that stop. Um, you know, he was all over the field. I thought Dayon Hayes, we saw a lot of nice things from him as well. We can see him kind of get home a little bit, which, like McIntyre, that, that was the difference for him. You know, he was right there in position to make plays. Uh, but he just had to finish him off. And today he was doing that at a much higher rate than I saw him do that last year. And, uh, you know, I'll close my segment with talking about Sean Fitzsimmons. I thought he was really, really excellent today. I mean, it's a guy that we haven't seen play really at all during his career. I mean, uh, came in as a freshman, buried in the depth chart, redshirt freshman year, dealing with a lot of injuries, uh, kind of nagging ones on and off. We saw him dress a bunch, but not actually get into games. Today, we really kind of saw him unleashed, and it's one of those guys a little bit in the mold of Kalaja Kansi, a little smaller in terms of his frame, but quick hands, athleticism, and I feel like he used that really, really well, not just to, to rush passers, but to stop the run, to fill gaps. He was 
he was really stout in the middle there. Uh, anyone else uh, you think that worth shouting out today? I guess Dayon Hayes. I mean, we talk about him leading the line. I think he will be the leader of the defensive line, at, especially at defensive end. He uh, did a really good job today. Um, forced a fumble, obviously the other team recovered it, but I mean, he's, he's been great. And I think it's his last season. He really wants to make that push to the NFL. He did pretty solid today. I, you can only hope as a pit fan and even just a member of the media to, to see some great production this fall. Yeah, we we had always heard about Dan and, you know, we'd heard about his potential. We had heard about, you know, everyone knows the recruiting profile. Like he is was supposed to be a star, arguably a little bit sooner than right now, but it seems like everything he's doing, everything we've heard, it's all kind of adding up to this being perhaps a big year for him. And so, Definitely encouraging to see the kind of steps that he made and the kind of uh, production that he was able to put on the field today. It all seems like it's kind of coming together a little bit. I want to move back to the offensive side of the ball because there was kind of a, an interesting storyline that popped up towards the end of spring ball uh, at the quarterback position. We heard a lot of great things about Eli Holstein. He was the second quarterback taken uh, in the spring game draft ahead of Christian Bayer. Where I think we kind of entered spring ball assuming that a guy who had started five games last year, I think played in six uh, or seven, would be the backup to Nate Yarnell. Nate Yarnell was established as QB1. We figured Bayer would slide in right behind him. Holstein would take a minute to come along, and then Duggar and Diefenbach would bring up the rear. Doesn't really seem that way anymore. I mean, Holstein had a nice day today. He started real rough. It was not pretty to begin uh, for Eli Holstein, but he really bounced back in a big way, finished 10-23, 128 yards, a touchdown, and an interception as well. What did you see from Eli Holstein, and was it enough to get him into that second-string job, or do you think he's already in that second-string job uh, in the quarterback room for the Panthers? Yeah, I think – I mean, we saw the players like him. That's one of the most important things, I think. Even as a coach, you might be like, well, you know, I don't know. But if the players are like, we want this guy as a backup, this is who we believe in, especially your wide receivers and tight ends, that's – I don't know who you're going to go with. And I think today – he had some struggles today. There was times where he threw some incomplete passes and missed some of these guys. But then there's other times you're like, wow, like he can really throw the ball, he can move around the field. And you're like, man, like this guy could be the backup, even though you know, he registered last year. And he had been dealing with some hamstring injuries that hampered him a little bit this spring. But he looked fine today. I think he did a pretty solid job. The great, great towards the end of this, the first half with that long touchdown drive. I think he was like seven for 10, 90 yards. That's exactly what you want from a backup, um, especially at just his second year of collegiate football. Um, but yeah, I think he did a really good job today. I really can't say anything else other than, you know, maybe cut down on some incompletions, but it's spring game. I wouldn't think about that too much, honestly. Yeah, I think you make a good point about that two-minute drill uh, at the end of the first half. I mean, I thought early in the first in the first half he looked a little flustered. Like, he looked like a guy taking some of his first – collegiate reps i mean you got to remember like you said he redshirted last year he's a redshirt freshman he's never played a regular season snap of college football before this is all still pretty new for him and in a new system in a new place with new teammates you can understand why it might maybe took a minute for him to warm up especially like you said the injury as well to his hamstring kind of holding him back holding that development back a little bit but you could just see him get more comfortable as time went on and then you know you throw him in a situation like that two minute drill where there is a little bit of pressure where where guys are looking at you to lead and he, he, the pressure is ramped up a little bit and he was the best that he had looked all day. Um, you know, he didn't look as flustered. He delivered the ball confidently. He spread the ball around as well. Took advantage of the good playmakers he has on his team. You know, I, I quite honestly, I, I I do believe that by the time we get to week one uh, of training camp or week one of of the regular season and we get that first depth chart, I I'm expecting to see Eli Holstein in that number two spot. I, I think he's earned that. Uh, I think he showed that today, especially, you know, you compare it to Christian Veyer's number. He went 0 for 6 on his six passes, no yards. Uh, Panthers, uh, you know, I, I I don't think it's all judged on the spring game, but uh, I think this has been a trend that's been building for a little bit. And I think that uh, by the time we get to Kent State week, it's going to be Holstein as your backup quarterback ahead of Christian Veyer. Do you, do you agree? Do you think Holstein's done enough to earn that second string job or does he need to show you a little bit more? I mean, I would like to see him show me a bit more, but I think he has. I mean, obviously, Pat Narduzzi said today that stats don't matter in the spring game. I would agree with him to an extent, but it wasn't like Bayer showed us anything really great today. And obviously, last year, he struggled with turning the ball over, and that's something that Pat was giving credit to uh, Eli la this week or last week. But recently, he gave him credit for being able to hold on to the ball. And, you know, I obviously, he's a defensive-minded coach. He does not want the offense turning the ball over, but, I mean, who does? And I think if Eli... I mean, outside from the uh, incompletions, I mean, the interception really wasn't his fault. It was, you know, tipped by Kenny Johnson, just a bit of a mix-up play. Um, 
cut down if he doesn't turn the ball over much, cuts down his incompletions. There's no reason why he shouldn't be the second string quarterback next season. Completely agree. Completely agree. And as we kind of wrap up this video, I want to think on a bit of a macro level about the Panthers and about the state of this team as they wrap up spring ball, they get summer break, and then they'll come back end of July, beginning of August to start fall training camp. What do you make of this team? What, are they going to improve on that 3-9 and nine record from last year? Are they going to be better? And just how much better do you think they are at this point in the year? Is this a stronger Panthers team than we saw in 2023 in your mind? I think the players have something to prove. I mean, last year they were really bad. Like, really, it was bad. It was awful football to watch overall. And the players talked about it. They're like, 3 nines unacceptable. We didn't play very well at all. And there's a lot of talented players on this team. So really, it's just trying to get all those pieces meshed together. Can those guys come together and make a really good team? And, you know, you have Nate Yarnell. He has a lot to prove. I mean, yeah, he did well towards the end of last season, but can he be the starting quarterback? I mean, is, does this offense make sense? Will the players, will they execute the offense that Kay Bell wants? Will they be able to do that? Will this defense be as good as we probably think it is? I think the defense is probably the best part of this team. We talked about the offense a lot. The defense has so many returning guys. The safeties have all returned. The linebackers are very solid, and they have some young guys that have done really well. And the defensive line has some very, very solid players that have a chance to break out this year. So can both things come together? Can they do that? I think if they can, we'll have a really good season. But if there's some mistakes and – some things that don't go as well as we'd like. It could be a, a bit disappointing season, but I, I think overall they should be better than three and nine at the, at the very least. <laughs> We're setting a very low bar and hoping that they, hoping they, they surpass it. I, I agree with you. I, I think they will be better than three and nine as low a bar as that is. Um, if you ask me right now, this looks like a team that I think can go back to a bowl game. And I feel like that should be kind of the bar that we're setting for this team in 2024. Look like in my mind, the defense is going to be the defense. I think it's going to get back to, you know what it's been for the vast majority of Pat Narduzzi's career. I think they're not going to be as bad against the run. Uh, I think the corners are a question, but I think they're going to be able to figure it out. I love their safeties. I love their linebackers. I'm not worried about the defense at all. And I think they showed me exactly what I thought I would see from them today. The offense, what is the big question? I mean, it really all hinges on the offense, unsurprisingly. Um, again, I think the special teams is going to figure itself out. It's not going to cost them wins in the same way that they did last year. So it, it just comes down to, is this scheme capable of performing at the ACC level? And is Nate Yarnell, like you said, capable of being a starting quarterback in the ACC for an entire season? From what I saw today, I, I, you know, I think I was confident in those things going into this year and going into spring ball. I am even more confident about those things now. Um, I think we saw really, really encouraging things from Yar Yarnell, from the offensive system. Uh, and then we just need kind of those skill positions to be those guys. We need Kenny Johnson to be the guy that he was today. We need a little bit more from Kanate Mumfield. We need that from Gavin Bartholomew uh, every year uh, or every game, excuse me. Um, and then we'll see what the offensive line is, but I'm pretty confident in in that group staying healthy and, and in if they stay healthy uh, that they can be pretty good and that they can run the ball effectively enough. Um, I, I think there is a lot more depth here. I think they are extremely talented. I thought they were talented last year and they just didn't put it together. So again, like you said, it's always about, well, can they put it together? That's going to be the question that everyone asks. And that's going to be the nagging question heading into August. Uh, but at the very least, I think they have the pieces together here. And I think they have the pieces to at least be better, if not uh, a pretty decent football team and get back to what Pitt has been for, like I said, the vast majority of Pat Narduzzi's career. That's where we're going to leave it for this video. Thank you all for tuning in to another Inside Pit Post Game Report. Make sure to like this video. Subscribe to us on YouTube. That's YouTube.com slash, uh, excuse me, YouTube.com slash Inside the Panthers. And follow all of our reporting at uh, SI.com slash college slash Pittsburgh. Like I said, appreciate you all tuning in, and we'll see you.